Good morning guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I have a really fun topic to share with you guys. This is my part one of my Sephora spring savings event sale haul. Did that make sense? <laughs> yes, part one of my Sephora spring savings event haul. I'm sorry guys, I just worked a night shift. I'm really tired and the words are not coming out right. So I'm super excited to share these items with you guys. So first of all, I want to preface by saying I know that technically I'm supposed to be on a no buy, low buy when it comes to makeup specifically, but also I don't want to go crazy with a whole bunch of new skincare products. I don't want to go crazy with a whole bunch of shampoos and conditioners and things like that. I am doing really, really well on my my no buy low buy for everything else like everything else that I talked to you guys about about what I was going to be careful about in 2024 um, using a one in one out method and just being like more cognizant of what I'm purchasing however you guys I have to say that I definitely have broken my rules when it comes to my no buy low buy for makeup and like self-care hair care kind of stuff if you guys had seen the last three months how stressed out i was and like some of the stuff i was going through the fact that i'm super happy right now and super excited about these items and they're bringing me so much joy and um, I'm just really enjoying this. That's important to me. And so I'm not going to knock something that's bringing me a lot of joy and happiness. And honestly, I should have known better than to say I was going to go on a low buy for makeup and skincare and hair care because those are three of my favorite things in the world. I'm still doing good when it comes to the perfumes, everything else, shoes, clothing. I haven't been like you know, shopping, wanting to get things for no reason. Um, but definitely like I'm having so much fun discovering makeup and skincare is always going to be important to me. If I discover something that I think is really beautiful, that I think is going to work really well for me, I don't want to put myself in too much of a box and not allow myself to try that thing. Yeah, I just wanted to get that out of the way, you guys. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Alithia. I would love if you guys would consider subscribing. You can also feel free to head over and follow me on Instagram. So this is part one, you guys, as I mentioned. I do have a few more things coming. Let me know if this is something you guys do too. You know, you think you have all the stuff that you want. It's in your basket. You've checked out. And then you discover more and more things that are interesting to you that you want to try or people are making recommendations. This haul is pretty balanced. We've got skincare, we've got hair care, we've got makeup. So without too much further ado, let's get into today's video. Okay, so the first item isn't actually from the sale. This is something I purchased about two weeks ago and this is the Tower 28 Mascara. And this is in the color jet so i'm not sure how many colors they have of this but this is just the jet color and i got this because i had heard really good things about it the price was actually pretty decent especially considering the price of drugstore mascaras these days you guys which are very very high like i don't remember mascara at the drugstore ever being this high so honestly the price of the tower mascara was not that much higher than drugstore and a lot of people gave this really good reviews and i did try the i think it's from revlon or l'oreal the panorama and I really really like it but I find it very hard to remove I have to really work with my oil cleanse and my face cleanser to get it off and I'm not a fan of like rubbing my eyelashes and really having to go in hard around my eyes to remove product um, I want something that I pretty much just a little bit of oil a little bit of water and it's gone I really really like this I can see why people have hyped up this mascara so the wand is that curved sort of wand like that it's quite nice. I don't find it to be um, particularly clumpy. I know some people have said that it kind of clumps on them. For me, it doesn't really clump at all. Um, I like the formula. I like how it goes on and it makes my lashes look really pretty in a nutshell. When it comes to mascara, unless it's really, really special, like I wouldn't say this is like the most wow factor special thing I've ever tried, but I do really like it and I do appreciate that it's very, very easy to wash off. I do get a little bit of like smudging or transfer under my eyes if I've been sweating a lot or something like that, but otherwise I feel it wears pretty well. And for me, honestly, it's just worth it to be able to wash it off easily without putting my eyes through too much. So one mascara that I do want to try that I actually have coming it's not going to be here for quite a while, I think, because Sephora is super busy, is the YSL Lash Clash. I have heard such good things, and that mascara seems to make people's lashes look magnificent. So I'm super, super excited to try that one, but I'm quite happy with my, with my tower purchase. The next item is one of the new Rare Beauty blushes. I wasn't really, there's a hair there, I wasn't really intrigued to try these initially because they looked like they would be very shiny and very highlightery for me and that's not something I really like in my blushes. I don't like a ton of highlight. Highlighter is actually something I don't wear a lot of. Um, so this is one of the new Rare Beauty blushes and this is in the shade Happy. 
So once I actually went in store and swatched this on my skin and kind of rubbed it in, I saw how beautiful it was on the skin. It's not overly highlighty. It's not too crazy to the point where I feel like I'm highlighted to the heavens, <laughs> but it does have a beautiful like shine to it. So one thing I've learned about myself is that I actually definitely look better in cooler toned blushes. I never, like in the past, I always thought that I was a coral person, like a corally, peachy, um, even like NARS Orgasm. Sometimes I really love the color. Other times I feel like it can be a little bit too coral on my skin tone because I am cool leaning neutral. Um, but I just thought this one was so stunning. I also liked a number of the other shades, but happy was the one that really spoke to me. It's this beautiful mid shade, sort of cool toned pink with this beautiful kind of subtle highlighter effect, but not too highlightery. I have worn it on my cheeks already. I do really like it. Um, so this was a good purchase and also really pigmented. I feel like the rare beauty products are really, really good quality for what you get. And also the package, the packages are so cute. It has like this really nice matte, really nice matte packaging. So really beautiful. So I'm really happy with that purchase. So the next item is a concealer and I am all about a good complexion. Like for me, when it comes to makeup, I'm not so much of a bronzer freak or a blush freak, although I like bronzers and blushes. Um, mascara, it's pretty easy to find good mascara, but for me, I feel like complexion will make or break. Like it's very, very important to me to have proper shade match, proper undertone, and I just want my skin to look beautiful and flawless. And as I've told you guys before, I've had a really hard time finding proper shade matches in foundations and less in concealer. I feel like concealers are easy, easier, but, um, foundations, I have a hard time finding a good shade match. So this is the hourglass concealer in the shade 1.5 creme. I've been wanting to try the hourglass concealers for quite a long time. And I wasn't really sure what shade to go with. I initially thought that I would be birch, which is the lightest one in the range. And you guys, I have to share a little vent, a little bit of a story, and I'll talk about it more when I get a couple of foundations that are coming because I actually, think I have better luck ordering online, like doing my own kind of decisions about what might work for me and comparing to the model skin and the shades online than when I actually go in store and get shade matched. Because this, every single time I have gone into a Sephora and been shade matched, every single time I have walked out with not quite the right shade. And I don't live close to Sephora. Like I have to drive two and a half hours there, two and a half hours back. And it's very disappointing when you get all the way home and you find out it's not the right shade, especially when somebody in the store is helping you find it. They're putting it on your skin. They're showing you what it looks like in the mirror and all of that stuff. One of the big problems I think um, is that they don't wait for it to oxidize. And I didn't think to wait for it to oxidize. And also the lighting in Sephora is not the best. This particular time I was in Sephora, um, the girl helping me was very polite, very helpful, but I was gonna go for the color Birch. She told me that would be way too light for me. She said, no, that's gonna look ridiculous. It's gonna be way too white. She said, go with the 1.5 creme. It's gonna be a better match. So I did. And Hourglass, seems to be a brand that I have a hard time finding shade matches. So as you can see, this is quite a pinky, almost a gray, sort of an ashy looking concealer. And I find that with a lot of the hourglass products, let me know if you've had a similar experience, but I find that a lot of the hourglass shades make my skin look quite ashy. So anyway, long story short, I got this home. I tried it. I still like it. Like it works. I can make it work but it's not my favorite shade. I should have gone with the birch because even if the birch would have oxidized slightly, it would have been fine for me. And also the birch was a better undertone for me. I believe that birch was neutral, I wanna say, and this is a cool undertone. And it's fine, but for me, sometimes cool undertones look a little too pink, a little too ashy. That's kind of almost what this one does. I can make it work, but it's not perfect. Um, and I'm a little bit annoyed because that day that I went into the store, I actually got shade matched for four different complexion products and I got home and three of them ended up not being the right shade. She, she swore up and down that those were the right ones for me and I was so excited because I really wanted those products. 
this was the only one that was like even close out of everything she helped me with. So I'm a little bit disappointed, but I can make this work. It's a really nice formula. I appreciate how it has a thicker consistency. It has excellent coverage. It does dry down a little quickly. It can be a little bit thick and cakey. I know a lot of people aren't a huge fan of the Hourglass concealers, but I do have, I think, a mini of the Birch coming and I'm dying to try it and see if it's a better fit for me. So that was a little bit long and winded, but yeah, um, I just wanted to vent that frustration because I would have a way cooler haul right now if some of those other products had worked out. <laughs> so case in point, you guys, this is a foundation that I ordered online and I just kind of looked at the swatches online. I looked at the models. I read about the undertone and I went with my history of trying the Makeup Forever HD products and I ended up picking a perfect, almost a perfect shade match. It could be a little bit on the light side, maybe even a little bit on the pink side for me, but it is the closest one out of the entire range that suits my skin tone. So this is the Mini Makeup Forever HD Skin Hydro Glow, which I was really, really excited to try. And this is in the shade 1N00 Alabaster, which is the lightest shade. So first of all, I'm not a huge fan of this bottle. It is such a small amount of product that you get. But honestly, you guys, when it comes to foundation, I would get minis in all of my foundations if I could, because that way I know I'm going to go through them. I don't like wasting. I don't like when things go bad. And I like having different foundations to play with. I like being able to try new things. So this is actually a very like non-wasteful and economically friendly way to go to try new foundations. So this was kind of a gamble and I've only actually worn this once, but I quite liked it the day that I wore it. I didn't find that it oxidized too badly at all. Um, it did oxidize just a touch, but it almost completely blends into my skin. You can hardly detect it. It almost matches with my neck perfectly. I believe this is, yeah, this is a neutral undertone and I think it's pretty good. It's a fairly good shade match for me. So I don't have full thoughts formed on this. I can't say like, is this a holy grail lifer kind of thing? I just literally wanted to get the shade match right and it was a pretty good shade match. So I will say that this does have fairly light coverage compared to a lot of my other foundations. Yeah, it was just a very light, kind of almost like a skin tint versus a foundation, but I liked it and I'm excited to try it a little bit more and see see how I like it. Okay, this was a product I did not order online. I got this in store. I This wasn't even on my radar. I had heard people talking about this, but I honestly didn't even think I wanted to try it. And it just was nowhere on like my mind. Um, so this is the Dior Glow Star Filter. And this is in the shade Zero, which is the lightest one that they have. I just was in Sephora one day, you guys. It was such a lovely day. I had a coffee. I literally spent three hours in Sephora. It was the most wonderful thing. It's one of my favorite things to do is just drink a coffee and walk around Sephora. If you know, you know. And I tried this on my hand just for fun. I tried on a whole bunch of products. And honestly, I could go back again today to tomorrow. Like I could spend every day they're drinking coffee and just like swatching things. It is so much fun. But I tried this on the back of my hand and it was like an instant wow, like instant, so beautiful. I have to try that. I have to bring it home and I have to try it. So this is kind of akin to something like the um, Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, which I also have. I actually gave that to my mom after trying this because I kind of had mixed feelings on the Hollywood Flawless Filter. So this is essentially like a tinted, like glowy, kind of a highlightery product. It basically gives you a beautiful glow, it gives you like a lit from within glow, um, a little subtle kind of a highlight. Um, it's not glittery or anything like that. It has this beautiful radiance to it. It just makes your skin look absolutely beautiful and radiant. I have not put this on my face. I've only had it on the back of my hand. So this is very much a first impression, how I will feel about this after I actually try it on my face, under makeup, mixed in with foundation, um, on top of foundation. I haven't really formed my thoughts on that yet, but you guys, when I put this on the back of my hand in the store, it just was so stunning, absolutely stunning. And for me, it blew Charlotte Tilbury out of the water. Like this blows Hollywood Falls filter out of the water so far for me. Um, it just, the, the radiance that's in here is a lot more like 
fine. It looks a little bit more ethereal. It looks more airbrushed. It looks more smoothing. It looks more perfecting. It's not as sticky. It has a more lightweight serum -y feel to it. The Hollywood Falls filter, I feel like, is a little thicker, a little more tacky, a little more sticky. Um, I found that that one actually accentuated my pores a little bit more. It was a little more drying. This one's more hydrating. Um, I just, it just looks amazing. So I cannot wait to actually try this and do a full face of makeup with it and see how I like it. And I really hope that I like how it looks once it's actually applied to skin. So you could wear this by itself. You could mix it in with foundation. You could um, just use it as a highlight, kind of whatever you like, but it's truly stunning. All right, so let's do just a couple of sort of more boring products, if you wanna call it that, before I get into some of my favorites. I wanted to save my favorite products from this haul for the end of the video. So this is the Rose Ink Foundation Brush, and I just really wanted a really nice, good quality foundation brush. And this one has really nice, dense, soft bristles, just really nice to touch. I think it's gonna be really nice on the face. I wanted something that I could get kind of like a really nice, just like cover I wanted something that wasn't going to soak up all my product because typically I do use a beauty blender um, and I find that that absorbs a lot of product and sometimes I want to go in with my fingers, sometimes I want to go in with a sponge, and sometimes I want a brush. And currently, I'm not loving the foundation brushes that I have. So the Rose Ink seems to have pretty good reviews. People seem to really like their products and yeah, I just think it's going to be really nice. It's also like super ergonomic. It's a nice little size. It's very comfortable to hold. I think it's going to be really beautiful. So I'm super excited to try this. And the last brush is the Rare Beauty Powder Brush. So I wanted to try this because I believe I saw Julia Adams makeup artist here on YouTube using this and it just looked so fluffy and so nice. It was a really nicely sized brush. I don't think you're going to apply too much powder. And because the bristles are so soft, like so incredibly soft, you can really go nice and lightly. You don't have to put like a whole bunch on. It's not super dense. It's not going to pack on a whole ton of product. It's just like, it just feels really, really nice um, on the skin. So I have used this to apply powder and I really liked it. The other brush that I've been using is from Sephora. It's the Sephora number no. 50. And I do like that brush if I want a bigger powder brush, but I kind of wanted something that I could be a little bit more precise. It's a really nice powder brush. I love the Rare Beauty brush brushes, you guys. Like I have yet to be disappointed with any of the Rare Beauty products really that I've tried. They're such high quality. Okay guys, so this is one of my favorite products from today's haul. I don't want to turn it upside down because I don't want a ton of the powder to come out, but this is the Givenchy finishing powder. This is the Prism Libre and this is in the shade, whatever the lightest one, Mousseline Pastel. So it's the lightest shade that they have. I actually was gifted this. <laughs> this is the crazy part. I was gifted this in PR like three years ago. And at that time I wasn't a huge makeup fanatic. So I didn't even know what this was. And I was super confused about all the colors and I didn't know how I would use it or what I would use it for. And at the time I wasn't really using finishing powders. So I didn't know what to do. And I literally gave this away to a friend and she was so ecstatic to get it and she's like a huge makeup person. And now I can see why she was so ec ecstatic to get it because it's expensive and it's beautiful. So yeah, this was actually the one product, you guys, that inspired my entire haul. This was the first thing I added to cart, the very first thing. I've been wanting to try this for quite a long time. I'm gonna open up the lid without trying to spill too much. Yeah, it likes to come out quite a lot. I don't want to spill it on the floor, but you guys can see. So it's just a beautiful, super, super finely milled powder. It has four different colors. It's got green, blue, lavender, and this pink, pink tone. And this is such a lovely powder. This is my first ever loose powder that I've owned. Um, it has inspired me to want to try some more loose powders because I actually quite like working with it. I like the consistency of it. I like applying it. It feels really nice. This is a beautiful powder for color correcting more than anything. Um, you guys know that my favorite finishing powders are the Hourglass Ambient Finishing Powder as well as the Charlotte Tilbury. This one I would say gives a beautiful kind of a, yeah, almost a filter look on your face. It kind of just blends everything together. It looks really pretty. And it does a good job of like color correcting and brightening on my face. I do have a little bit of redness, so I do like that there's a little bit of that green powder there. The Charlotte Tilbury for me is that one that I use when I want a flawless matte finish. The Hourglass is the one that I use when I want sort of an airbrushed look. 
and I want like a, almost as if I've put a filter on my face and I want a little bit of a radiance, just a subtle glow. This is one I would use when I need a little bit more color correction or wanted to brighten. So those are kind of my three, like I feel like the Hourglass for me doesn't brighten and I feel like the Charlotte Tilbury also doesn't brighten and neither of them really color correct. So I was just super, super excited to try this. Okay, so I just got a couple of hair products to show you guys. So as you guys know, if you've been watching my channel, I'm currently using the Olaplex bonding oil on my hair. My previous favorite bonding oil is no longer available, and that was the Ritual Playa hair oil, which I think was under the company Morphe, and the Playa hair oil is no longer available. That was my favorite, favorite, favorite hair oil in the world. I loved how it smelled. I loved how it felt. I loved how it made my hair look. Um, it just was like top notch for me. It was so, so good. And I was so sad that I couldn't get it anymore. Then I switched over to the Olaplex bonding oil. And while I'm sure it's doing something on like a molecular level, I'm sure it's like helping my hair at a microscopic level, perhaps in some capacity, but I have not visualized that yet. Like after I apply the bonding oil on my ends of my hair, I don't really appreciate like any more shine, radiance, softness, smoothness. My hair still feels quite dry. Like, yeah, I just needed some more intense hydrating and conditioning. I guess the bonding oil is not meant to be a leave-in conditioner, right? They're different things. So I really wanted to pick up a couple of good hair products during the sale because I apply hair oils and hair leave-in conditioners and masks to my hair on a continuing basis. This is the Shu Yamura, I hope I'm saying that properly, the Shu Yamura Essence Absolute Nourishing Overnight Hair Serum with red camellia seed oil. So I have heard great things about this one. This has been on my radar for quite a while. It was a little bit expensive. I didn't want to bite the bullet and purchase it, but since it was on sale for the um, Sephora savings event, I went ahead and added to cart and I was really excited to get it because shortly after I bought it, it went out of stock. So I'm not really sure what the claims. It says this overnight serum infused with red camellia seed oil brings intense hair, intense care to hair, leaving it nourished, smoothed, and tamed overnight. In the morning, hair is ready to style. Apply one or two pumps on hair before bedtime. So I've used this once and I've used the other one that I'm about to share with you once. And I will say that both of them left my hair feeling nice, but it's obviously going to take some time to see like if the health of my hair improves, if my hair is like shinier and more manageable and softer and all of that stuff over time. But I am a huge like skincare hair care fanatic. I want to put good quality stuff on my skin and on my hair. Um, so I will say, so this is actually a thicker serum than what I imagined. I'll show you what it looks like. It's quite thick. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's quite a thick, it's not like a runny consistency at all. It smells lovely. Yeah, it just smells very, it smells lovely. I kind of expected it to be more fragranced, honestly, based on the reviews. People were saying that it smelled amazing. And to me, I wouldn't say it's like the best smelling thing I've ever smelled, but it does smell very, very nice. And I'm super excited to use this for a while and see how it leaves my hair. And the second hair serum that I got is from Kerastase. This one I think actually has more reviews and even better reviews than the Shu Yamura. And I haven't formed really an opinion yet which one I like better, but I'm sort of leaning toward the Kerastase. So this is the Kerastase Eight Hour Magic Night Serum with plant-based proteins and niacinamide. I don't think there's any claims on the back, um, but this is supposed to deliver like hydration to your hair, make it more manageable, um, all that stuff. I've seen really good reviews about this online and I just really wanted to try it. And Kerastase again is a little bit more pricey, so I wanted to take advantage of the sale. This one actually smells really nice too. I'll show you guys the consistency. This one's a pretty much the same consistency as the Shu Yamura. I like the way this one smells. Yeah, it smells really beautiful. Um, kind of like a typical hair care kind of scent. Um, but this one, I will say, I noticed more of an instant softness with this one compared to the Shu Yamura. I'm sure they're both gonna be great, but if in the moment you asked me to pick my favorite, like right now, I would pick the Kerastase. Um, so I'm really excited to use both of them. I'm also almost out of my, the Pureology leave-in conditioner, I'm almost out of that one because I do use that one every single day, every, well, every single time I wash my hair, I use that one. So yeah, leave-in sprays, leave-in conditioners, they're things I go through pretty quickly. Um, so I'm not upset at all to have both of these beautiful conditioners for my hair and I'm super excited to continue using them and see which one I think is better. If you guys have tried both, let me know which one you prefer. Okay, this is my second last 
Well, actually I have two other items, but they're the same thing. They're just different colors. Um, but this is my second last item, I guess, in today's haul. And this is the Tatcha, the Dewy Skin Cream. Very popular. This doesn't need an introduction. It doesn't need an explanation. Everybody seems to really love this cream. I have tried this cream in store so many times and I didn't really understand the hype. Like I would go into the store and I would put this on the back of my hand and I would rub it in and I honestly didn't think it seemed that hydrating or that nourishing for the skin. It seemed to me like it had a very light, um, almost gel-like kind of uh, consistency. And for me, that's not what I like. I like something that's creamy and rich and is going to leave my skin feeling plump and hydrated. I wanted something that was going to deliver like intense hydration. However, when I was in Sephora again, I saw this sitting there and it just kind of called to me. This was a little bit of an impulsive purchase, but at the same time, I do use skincare twice a day. I apply moisturizers twice a day. So it's not like it's not going to get used. And I'm all about looking after my skin. <laughs> so for me, um, trying a beautiful new moisturizer is A-OK -okay with me, especially if it's something super beautiful. So first of all, I just want to show you guys the packaging. You've obviously seen this before. I don't have to really say much about it. What I really like about it is it has this little spatula on top that just slides in and out and it's in there quite good. Like it's not going to fall out. I really like that. My Sunday Riley comes with a spatula, but there's no like holder for it, which is annoying. So the spatula is always falling off the container. And I really like that the Pharmacy Honey Halo, which is one of my other favorite moisturizers, comes with a spatula and it's a magnetic one that sticks to the cap, which is nice. This one has this really nice little, little thing that kind of just holds it in there. It's in this beautiful kind of periwinkle colored bottle and the cream itself is also a beautiful periwinkle lavender blue color. So first of all, the scent, it smells just like pretty um, kind of spa-like, almost like lotus. I almost get a little bit of a gingery quality. I'm not really sure what the like fragrance notes would be in here, but it smells just kind of like high-end luxury spa-like kind of scent. I like it. A lot of people don't like scent. Um, for me, fragrance does not bother my skin, so this doesn't bother my skin at all. So you guys, I'm so glad I took a chance on this cream because <laughs> the experience of applying this, applying this on the face is so much nicer than on the back of the hand. It glides onto the skin of your face beautifully. This feels silky. It feels like I'm putting silk on my face. It's absolutely beautiful. It has really tempted me to want to try more skincare from the Tatcha line, like their, I think it's actually called the Silk Peony Eye Cream. I'm like super tempted to try it, but it's really expensive and I don't want to spend any more money during the sale. I've already purchased enough stuff. Um, but yeah, I've become... You know, I've definitely become a Tatcha like lover. I can see why everybody likes this cream. It does feel lightweight initially, but once you put it on your skin and rub it in a little bit, goes a really long way. And it just leaves my face feeling so soft and really hydrated and it's just beautiful. I think this is perfect for combination to dry skin. I think if you're really oily, you might not appreciate this, but they do have a lighter, um, cream in the shade. It's like a gel formula, I think. And then they also have one that's a little bit richer and deeper and it's like a nighttime repair. I kind of want that one too. <laughs> I kind of want the eye cream. I kind of want the nighttime repair. Like it's just beautiful. Um, so I can see why people really like this. It deserves all the hype. It feels so gorgeous on the skin. So in comparison to my Sunday Riley and my pharmacy honey halo, cause you guys know those are my two other Holy grail favorite all time moisturizers. The difference Aside from scent, the Sunday Riley is more of like a plumping consistency. It's a rich plumping consistency. It makes my skin feel plump and hydrated. This one feels more silky smooth and leaves it feeling silky smooth hydrated. The Pharmacy Honey Halo feels more buttery. It goes on like butter. It melts into your skin. It's really nourishing and hydrating, but it doesn't leave you feeling particularly like pillowy plump or silky or anything. It's just a lovely moisturizer that really hydrates my skin and is very healing and nourishing. All three of them are good for different reasons. Honestly, all three of them are going to be in my rotation like this. I've been using this now for the last like three days, four days. And wow, like it's really good. If I had to choose between this and Sunday Riley, 
This gives Sunday Riley a run for her money, not gonna lie. But I think if I had to pick one, you guys, I'd still have to pick Sunday Riley because I still love my Sunday Riley and I love the way it smells and I've just been using it for so long and it's beautiful and my skin loves it. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna be using all of these on high rotation and it'll be really interesting to see in about six months to a year what my most gravitated toward was and like if my thoughts change about any of my moisturizers because this one definitely gives them gives them a run for their money. And the final two products that I would say are some of my favorite in this entire haul, like I love the Givenchy powder, I love the hair products, I love the Tatcha. I have some amazing stuff in today's haul. These are two, you guys, I'm obsessed with these. These are the Bobbi Brown Long Wear Cream Eyeshadow Stick. So first of all, I got it in the color Bone and I also got it in the color shell. I'll show you what they look like and then I will swatch them for you. So that's what the eyeshadow stick looks like and you obviously just turn it up like that and apply it. You do have to be careful with these. Um, I have dropped both of them already and um, when I dropped the other one, the thing actually flew out and like landed on the counter. The whole thing just came out. Luckily it wasn't ruined. I was able to salvage it, but just be careful. They're not something I would want banging around in a bag or like I probably wouldn't travel with them or put them in checked luggage. Anyways, you'd have to be really careful with them. So just try not to drop them because the sticks are very powdery soft and fragile. So where do I begin with these eyeshadows? So first of all, I love a cream eyeshadow. Cream eyeshadows for me are superior to powder eyeshadows because I have dry skin. So I'm just going to put them up so you can see. So the one on the left is Shell and it's a very subtle, muted, nudie pink color. The one on the right is Bone and it is a, again, it's a subtle, kind of a muted, almost a pale yellow. Now, you might not think that yellow would be flattering on the eyes. It brightens my eye, it makes my eyes look so awake, it makes me look so like bright and rejuvenated and awake. It's just absolutely stunning. I like wearing it all over the entire lid. It's amazing. It also hides any kind of like discolorations. It's very like um, quite opaque. It's got a really good color payoff. They're quite pigmented. So if you have any like veins on your eyes or um, any discoloration or darkness on your eyelids or anything, it's going to cover it up. I didn't even have to use eyeshadow primer. Like I didn't use concealer. I didn't use eyeshadow primer, nothing. These just glide on beautifully. They're heavily pigmented. The other one, the shell one, it is beautiful. It is a little bit dark, but it's a beautiful kind of a subtle, everyday, neutral color. It's subtle and it's pretty. What I like about these sticks, super pigmented, last a long time, easy to apply, very creamy, very hydrating, and they last forever. Like you guys, I swatched about five of these and they were on my skin for two days. Like I tried to wash them off with soap and water. The only thing I didn't use was micellar water, but after I had a shower and like slept and everything transfer proof, they're, they dry down really nicely. The only one I will say that doesn't have as good staying power would be the pale, the pale one, the bone color. But I love these so much. Like I like these better than any of my powder eyeshadow palettes and I've ordered a couple more colors because I think they're they're really beautiful and you can also create like um, a smoky look with it you can use one color on the lid one color in your crease you can use like two or three different colors and you can create whatever eye look you like but what I particularly like about these um, pencils is that they're very simple they're easy you know it's one and done these two colors in particular I find to be quite quite um, brightening quite brightening on the eye. They just look beautiful and I'm literally obsessed. If you are a pale girl or a fair skinned girl like myself and you're looking for a couple of really great eyeshadow sticks, check out the Bobbi Brown Longwear and I would highly, highly recommend these two shades, Shell and Bone. Very different, slightly different undertones, um, but they still work. I would say these are actually both quite, quite neutral. They're neither too warm nor too cool. So they're amazing. I'm so happy to have them and I'm really excited to try more colors. So that was it for today's little haul, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed seeing all the things that I got in this Sephora savings event. I don't know why I cannot get those words out of my mouth today. I hope everyone's having a really good day and thank you for being here with me today and I'll see you all very soon in my next one. Bye for now.